Skrilla, Skrilla. Blue face pillar, face pillar. The blade dealer, uh. Make a nigga forfeit, yeah. Cause I'm the realest. Hey, niggas talking short shit. Nah, I need a million. Uh. Big stepper, Big stepper. yeah. Bitch, I be stepping, stepping. Cooling kit with the flip switch, bitch, that's the weapon. <laughs> no drama. drama. Welcome to New York Giants, full access. Nice legend, bring them sounds at one time. I'm Art, and we got you. And that's it, man. Go purchase Big Passports Talk merch and support the family, man. And welcome to Big Passports Talk. Thank you for your support. What's going on, YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, all platforms? Welcome to another episode of New York Giants, full access with your boy, Big Passports Talk. And today's subject, we're talking about Mr. Darius Slayton. Does he deserve a contract extension with the New York Giants? He's been in, in the news the past week or so asking the New York Giants to extend his contract. He believes that he's worth more than the $6.5 million that he's getting this season. And this is the last year of his contract, so this is not out of the ordinary. And he skipped voluntary workouts which the New York Giants are not complaining about him missing voluntary workouts. Now, let's get into the subject of Darius Slayton as a player. Now, when it comes to consistency with the New York Giants over the past four to five years, let's just say as long as Daniel Jones has been here, I believe since 2019, he has been probably the only consistent player year after year for the New York Giants. Um, he is not often injured as many Giants have been injured and he's been the number one receiver for the New York Giants whether you believe he's a good receiver or not. Um, he's been the number one receiver as far as production for the New York Giants since 2019's rookie season. So he he's going to give you at least 700 yards to between two to five touchdowns a year now are those great stats no that those are not number one receiver elite receiver stats uh according to what other receivers are doing like justin jefferson and jamar chase deandre hopkins uh Devontae adams dj moore stefan diggs all those upper echelon receivers. So, a lot of Giants fans I have seen over in the media, over on Twitter, that they don't believe this guy deserves a, another contract. They believe this man is only worth three to five million dollars. They saying that he's been done that the six point five million dollars. He's really not even worth that. So, Slayton as a player. He's not the greatest route runner, and he hasn't had consistent hands throughout his career. Now, this past year, he only dropped one pass, which is tremendously, tremendously better than what years have passed where he's dropped crucial passes and crucial games and, th and things of such. But he's been the only receiver that's been consistent for the New York Giants, no matter who the quarterback is. He's always given us 700 between 700 and 780 yards and between two to five touchdowns every year. So just that alone, I believe, is worth something. Like, I believe Slayton in a, in, on a good team can be a decent number two and a heck of a number three receiver. So Darius Slayton has been averaging 700 yards and a couple of touchdowns being the primary focus on a team that does not have a good supporting cast. We don't have a good offensive line. We don't have a great running game. Everybody believes, everybody believes and will tell you we don't have a quarterback. And our offensive systems have changed mightily over the past four to five years. But he just seems to consistently give you that consistent production and I do believe that's worth something and when you look at the receivers that are being paid that are number two receivers like Gabe Davis 
like a, a Alan Lazard, like a Jacoby Myers, uh, uh, what's what's the guy over there? Is Kendrick Bourne and receivers as such, uh, like a Jerry Judy that got paid eighteen million dollars and he has never gotten a thousand yard receiver. That's a knock a uh, thousand yard season. That's a knock on Darius Slayton. Oh, he's never had a thousand yard uh season. Well those guys are getting paid between eleven and seventeen million. And if I'm a player as Darius Slayton, hey look, when you put up my numbers against those guys, they're very similar. So why shouldn't I, in the last year of a deal, which I took less money to come play for you, why shouldn't I get what I'm worth, which is between 11 and $14 million. I say give them $12 million per year over the next two years. And it would be a three-year contract with an out after two. That's what I say that he should get. But a lot of people believe that we should just let him go. That he's not worth another contract and he's not a good enough receiver to even be asking for a penny more than what he's getting right now. He should just be grateful for what he's getting right now, which I believe that is not true. Think about this. If we get rid of Darius Slayton, our, our receiving core has gotten a lot better over the years. The past two years, we have Malik Neighbors, Wandale Robinson, Slayton, Hyatt. Uh, we just signed Isaiah McKenzie. You know, Bryce Ford Wheaton's trying to shake back from the ACL last year. But if you get rid of Darius Slayton, who's going to be your number two receiver besides neighbors? Beside neighbors. Do you really believe that Jalen Hyatt is ready to go out there and be a primary focus of an offense when they try to take Malik neighbors from us? Or they bracket Wondell Robinson in the slot because Wondell Robinson is not a number two receiver. He's a slot receiver. And I do believe he could be one of the better slot receivers in this game. That is true. But can you depend on Hyatt to be the number two receiver? For all the people that want to get rid of Darius Slayton and don't value his worth to this team. Is Hyatt's route running up to par? Is Hyatt really ready to take that role over and be that other primary option on this team? Let's not forget that Slayton is the most veteran receiver on this team besides Hodgins. And Hodgins is not a guy that you can depend on getting you the ball down the field. Now, Hodgins in the red zone, I believe, is the best on the team besides Malik Neighbors. At getting in, the, getting the ball in the end zone far, far as a receiver, like he does that very well. Some reason he in, in in the red zone is money. But what about getting the ball down the field? What about stretching the field? What about that receiver you could count on to run those deep dig routes the way Slayton runs them? Can you really depend on Hyatt to do that consistently? Can you depend on Hyatt to bring coverage besides the deep ball? These are some of the things that you have to ask yourself with Darius Slayton. And with Darius Slayton, you get loyalty. The man has never complained about his situation here with the New York Giants. He went from being the primary focus receiver to sixth on the depth chart when a new regime came in 2022. You guys seem to forget that you were wanting Alex Bachman and David Seals and people like Marcus Johnson over Darius Slayton that year, and he wound up being the number one receiver again. He's not often injured, injured like Shepard was. And let's not forget, he's not the only receiver on this team that had questionable hands before last year. It's just, it's just a fact. And Hyatt had more drops than Slayton last year and way less playing time. Even though he was, he's a rookie, I'm quite sure he will fix that in the years to come. The man went from sixth on the depth chart to being the number one receiver again. And then when it was time for his contract, 
He could have signed for more money with the Falcons, but he came back to the Giants. Now, you can have whatever reason you want to say that he didn't go sign with the Falcons and had to come back to the Giants. You can say whatever you want to say, but he did that. After you told him that he probably wasn't even going to have a spot on this roster. He was behind Kenny Galladay, no longer here. Kadarius Toney, no longer here. David Seals, no longer here. Alex Bachman, no longer here. Marcus Johnson, no longer here. Sterling Shepard, no longer here. Guess who's still here? Darius Slayton. And last year, he did it again. He had the most production out of all our receivers again last year. Now, according to a lot of Giants fans and a lot of the negativity these Giants fans give out, that doesn't mean a dang old thing. Get rid of him. Let's go with the youth movement, even though he's only 26 years old. Even though he knows the system. Even though he's been the most consistent Giant since he's been here. Let's just keep it a buck. Because Andrew Thomas' first two years, he, he was shaky. Dexter Lawrence first three years he was shaky. Daniel Jones is still shaky. Saquon Barkley in and out the lineup. We brought in Darren Waller last year in and out the lineup, not consistent. Hyatt, not consistent. Wondell Robinson, injuries. Hodgins, inconsistent. Very good in the red zone, but inconsistent. Not somebody you're scared of. Richie James went over to the Chiefs. Kadarius Toney went over to the Chiefs. So all those guys that were in front of him, he put his head down, he worked, and when he was called upon, he stepped up every time. You cannot take that away from him. So a lot of these Giants fans that are just ready and willing to get rid of anybody that asks for a little bit of money in their pocket, you better start rethinking some things because what his production and where the money lines up, he's actually worth pretty much double of what he's getting right now. Because Gabe Davis, Alan Lazard, all those guys that got those contracts are putting up similar numbers to Darius Slayton. And those guys are not much better than what Slayton brings to the table. Yes, he might not be the greatest route runner. He, not, he might not be a good red zone receiver at all. But what he does do is he stretches the field, and he he seems to always be that guy we throw the ball to when we need yardage. He just seems to come up big for us in moments that we need him to. And I do believe that's worth a contract extension of at least $11 million a year. You guys are acting like he's asking for $20 to $25 million a year. That's not what he's asking for. He's not asking for T. Higgins money. He's not asking for Brandon Ayuk money. He's not going to get Calvin Ridley money or Christian Kirk money. or He's not going to be asking for C.D. Lamb money. Let's stop acting, acting like our players can't ask for anything especially when they go out and earn it. So, I'm in favor of signing, re-signing uh, Darius Slayton to a contract extension. I say, look, give him three years, $36 million. That's an average of $12 million a year. Give him about $14, 15000000 million guaranteed and have an out after the second year. And let's see if he can step up and be that number two receiver to Malik Neighbors. Because if Malik Neighbors opens up this field, Slayton's going to be one of the main guys that Daniel Jones looks to because he has familiarity with him. They have a chemistry together. Pause. And so if you want to do what's best for this team, keep your veteran receiver on this team. The guy that has the most production. The guy that's been the most consistent. The guy that, that knows this system, been in this system, this would be the third year. The guy that's put his head down, never complained, taking pay cuts, taking cuts to his play time, and never said, hi, you need me now when we needed him. He just stepped up and did his job. And I believe you need guys of character like that on your team when you're trying to build something. So that's my whole take on the Darius Slayton contract situation. Hopefully they can get this resolved and hopefully we can get 
Malik Neighbors, Wandell Robinson, Hyatt, and Slayton on the field. And let's see what we can do. But thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that big blue join button and join the big blue crew. And talk your talk with Big Pat Sports Top. Talk. Cop you some merch. I'm not playing no more. I'm going to find you dudes. I'm going to find you dudes who are looking at my merch and not buying it. I'm going to find you. And when I find you, we're going to have to have a serious talk. <laughs> but until the next episode, you know what it is, man. Peace. Hitting the mic, yes, spitting the facts, coming with full access. Big Pat hit in the house with giant tactics. Eli's hand off, rapping the classics. 90s beats, we blast this in New York. Big blue. Where the G Men roam, Super Bowls in the vault, that's the Empire's home. Red, white, and blue, where the legends have grown. Giants full access, this the zone, got the tone. Big, 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 big